and it is just awesome to be here today. I am, um, it's awesome to be with family because we're family, and I am so grateful. I am so grateful, even just as I um, think about it and was, Pastor Fuli had asked me just to come and share. I'm just so grateful for this house. You have a good house. <laughs> You have a good house. I'm so grateful for, uh, even as I stand here, I'm just so uh, humbled. Um, Pastor Bob, such a great teacher, man of God. Pastor Fule, great teacher, man of God. Pastor Mike sat underneath his teaching. I'm just humbled just to, just to be part of this experience because this is a kingdom experience that you guys have here. And I just want, can we just bless God for the, for the pastors and the wives that's in this house and I just love you guys. I honor you guys. Uh, you guys have been uh, an example to, to us as a fellowship and just uh, you, you've, you've really helped to parent us as a fellowship. God has done great things in our, in our community together. We've done Join the Park and Emmanuel and these different things. I'm just so grateful for this house. <laughs> I'm so grateful for this house uh, and, and all that God is doing and um, it's, it's so good to uh, just to know Jesus. How many are just so grateful for the gospel of Jesus Christ that has made us brothers and sisters and tear down all these walls and everything and yeah, just grateful for that. Just grateful for that. So um, today I'm just going to be talking for a little bit. The word that God put on my heart was uh, a sermon that I actually uh, uh, gave at, at Kingdom Life a few weeks ago, but, but I sense, I just sense the Holy Spirit said, yeah, this, you know, this is, this is something I want you to share again, and it's just about look, what's, look what came out of this storm. Look what came out of that 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 storm. Um, a few uh, weeks ago on Facebook, after the hurricane had passed through Florida, there was a, um, a friend of mine had posted something, and he had posted a picture of banana, bananas and banana leaves. And he had just moved to Florida like a month before the hurricane. And he said, wow, I, 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 uh, I went out into, into my backyard the day after the hurricane, and I, I found these bananas. And he said, I never knew I had a banana tree. But the hurricane had, 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 had hit the tree in such a way where it, where it came down and, and, and he could see that bananas were growing in this tree. And I, the, as, as I watched on Facebook, as I saw the post, I, you know, it began to minister to me in terms of there are some fruit that we will only see after a storm has passed. And it might have been there all along. But now God has exposed it, and you see its value and its benefits. So we're just going to be talking for a little bit this morning about look what came out of that storm. Look what came out of that storm. So I just want to sing us a little bit of that. We could have worshipped all day today because Waymaker, miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Let's make that declaration of faith to yourself again. Who he is? Way make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, just say that again. He's the way maker, the way maker, miracle work, promise keep. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. One more time, he's the way maker, say, way maker, miracle work, promise keep. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. And so no matter where we are, God, no matter where we are, no matter what we've come here with, no matter what we, we, we've encountered even in this week, we just look to you because you are the way maker. And we look to you because you are the miracle worker. And we look to you because you are the promise keeper. And no matter how dark it may be in our, in, in our circumstance, no matter how dark it may be in our mind, we look to you because you are our light. 
And you promised, Lord, that you gave a, a promise in your word that your word is a, a, a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. So bless your word now as it goes forth. It may bring light to whatever darkness may be in someone's heart or in someone's mind. And we say thank you for revelation. And we say thank you for truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on and just give God praise in here. If you, if you ever come to Kingdom Life on Saturdays, you know I, 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 uh, we, we always teach from down here. So it's kind of it's weird to be high and lifted up. <laughs> but, but Pastor said it's best for the, uh, for the, for the video. So I'm just kind of get, get used to it. Can I just have more of my voice in the monitors so I don't over, over speak? Praise God. Awesome. So God is so good that we come out of and exit storms with trial and trials with spoils. Spoils. Somebody say spoils. Back in the day, back in the day when, 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 when an army, uh, you know, uh, took something from another place or whatever, they came out with spoils. They came out with something. David in the Bible, when he came out of, uh, uh, when he went, entered into battle with different armies, they came back with stuff. And when, and when we go through storms in life, and as Pastor Fule said earlier on in worship, we all are going to go through at some time something. But when we go through stuff, it's so good to know. And God is so big, and he's so good that he's like, I'm not just letting you go through this for no reason. And I'm not just letting you go through this and exit this without something, without something in your hand, without something that you can hold on to, without something that you can look back on and say, look what God did. So I want to start with this text from 1 Corinthians 15, 57. And it just says, but thanks be to God who gives us victory, and my version said, who always gives us victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Victory. Can you just say that word today? Victory. Victory. So he always causes us to triumph. That's what another version of the Bible said. He always causes us to triumph. If you are facing a storm or a challenge, it's not God's intention for it to get the best of you, but for you to triumph over it. Hallelujah. How we triumph, how we triumph may look differently for each person in each circumstance. But we know that God is at work and working all things together for good to those who love him and who are called for his purpose. Hallelujah. So today we're just going to examine three things that come out of, that come out of storms. Three things that come out of storms. And, 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 and James 1 verse 12 says this, and I love this. I love this. Blessed is the man, blessed is the woman who endures trials. Touch somebody, say endure. endure. Because when he passes the test, he will receive the crown of life that he has promised to those who love him. Interesting. Whenever somebody wins a race in the Olympics, they always get something. And so I always used to think of the crown of life in terms of, you know, something that we're going to receive when, when, when we hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant, because we're going to receive something then. But there is something that comes when, I, when a test or when a trial, and you've endured, and, 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 you, and you cross that finish line, because storms are not forever. There's an old uh, spiritual that said, I'm so glad that trouble don't last always. <laughs> so storms are not forever, but when you cross that line, there's a, he says, I, I, I'm blessing you with something. I'm blessing you with more life. I'm blessing you with more life. So here's what James said in James 1 verse 2 to 4. James 1 verse 2 to 4. He said, consider it a great joy, my brothers, my sisters, whenever you experience various trials, storms, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Hallelujah. But endurance must do its complete work. It must go all the way so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. What it says in the message version of the Bible, it says, you know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. So somebody might be like, you know, why am I going through this, God? Why are you taking me through this? And he, he just, made, he, I just want to I just want you to see your, you know how Superman had that S on his chest and he... we have the Holy Spirit within us and God is like, I want you to know how strong and how mighty my power is in you. I know that you're going through something that does not feel good right now, but if you know who's in you, the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead 
I want you to see your true colors, which is my spirit and the power of my spirit in you. So experience, James is saying, you're going to have to need experiences in order to mature as a believer. You're going to have to actually go through stuff in order to mature as a believer. To get to the Olympics, I'm talking about Olympics a lot because Adwa has been posting all this stuff about running on Facebook or running. And, but to get to the Olympics, for an athlete to get to the Olympics, there has to first be an Olympic trial. That means, are you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you able to get in to represent the country? Now, we're representing the king. We're representing the kingdoms. But our faith is going to be tested. Because he's like, I want a true representative. I'm looking for someone like Jesus who looks like his son. So experience teaches me things that only experience can teach me. So the first thing that comes out of a storm, experience. Just touch somebody, say experience. Experience teaches me things that only experience can teach me. And in the kingdom, we have the potential, the capacity to come out of the experience of a storm or a trial with spiritual maturity. Spiritual maturity. David, the story of David is so good. And David is, 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 is about to, 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 he sees Goliath just, just, just ranting and raving and saying all sorts of things about the God of Israel. He hears Goliath and, you know, for, for how many days Israel had just stood there and just listened. Just listened and so careful, especially in this time. What, be careful what we listen to, that voice that we listen to. Be careful of that. And David, David shows up and he's like, what is going on? And who is this guy talking about? <laughs> My God. <laughs> and his kingdom like this. So David says, you know what, I can take this guy. And so they take David, who had just, he had just came to, to, to bring cheese. That's all he had showed up for, to bring cheese. But they, they, they take David and they bring him before, before King Saul. And, 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 and King Saul is just like, this is the guy that you're bringing to, to face Goliath? Like, for real? For real? <laughs> and so this is what David says. We're talking about experience. First Samuel 17, 33, he said, you cannot, Paul, Saul says, you can't go fight this Philistine. Paul actually spoke death over him. He said, you can't. No. You're just a youth. And he's been a warrior since he was young. But David answered Saul. He said, your servant has been tending his sheep. And whenever a lion or a bear experience came uh -huh, and carried off a lamb from the flock, I went after it, struck it down, and rescued the lamb from its mouth. And if it reared up against me, experience I would grab it by the fur and strike it down and kill it. Your servant had killed lions and bears. Experience. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. For he, yeah, 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 yeah. For he has defied the armies of the living God. Then David said, the Lord who rescued me, experience, from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Hallelujah. And Saul said to David, go and may the Lord be with you. <laughs> Saul didn't get it. Saul didn't get it. Saul didn't get it. But David was confident he could take down the giant because of the experiences he had been through and he had seen God come through for him. In. Confident. Experience builds confidence. His faith had been built up through challenging experiences and now he had a testimony that he could rely on when he was facing a giant. Hallelujah. Experience. 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 The, uh, the, 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 the word says in, 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 Philippians, in Philippians 4 verse 11 to 12, Paul said, I have learned to be content with whatever circumstances I am in. I know both how to have little and I know how to have a lot. In any and all circumstances, I've learned the secret of being content, whether well-fed or hungry, whether in abundance or in need. And he said, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Paul was saying, I've learned through experiences that I can trust God to give me grace. But I've learned, I've had to go through some things in order for me to come to a place where no matter if he said, if I, if I abound or if I'm abased, man, God has given me grace for this thing. God has given me grace through this thing. Hallelujah. When you have been through one hurricane, 
you have an idea of how to deal with the next one coming up. Uh-huh. Part of how we move from glory to glory in the kingdom is drawing on the wisdom gained from experiencing trials and challenges in life and not giving Praise God. Praise God. So the first thing, experience. Look at somebody say, I have some experience behind me. Come on. Come on. Come on. The second thing that we gain, and there's many, I'm just looking at three, coming out of a storm, coming out of trials, coming out of a situation, perspective. Hey, perspective. Perspective. Perspective in the dictionary says a particular attitude toward or way of regarding something, a point of view. Uh, there's an old song, and it, 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 it's, it's by Jimmy Cliff, and, and it simply said, I can see clearly now because the rain is gone. The rain is gone. I can see clearly now the rain. I can, he, said, he, he, went out, he said, I can see all obstacles in my way. The brother said, I have perspective. <laughs> I have perspective. After each storm we go through, we are blessed with a new perspective spiritually. It can be a new perspective of our values, a new perspective of our friends, a new perspective of ourselves, uh-huh, or a new perspective of our God and his character. After the disciples went through a storm with Jesus, they went through the storm and they, they said, Master, don't you care that we're perishing? Don't you care that we're dying? And Jesus stood up and he spoke to the storm and he said, Peace be still, and, 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 and the word of God says in Matthew 8, 27, that the disciples were amazed. They'd been with him for a while. They'd seen him turn water into wine. They'd seen him heal the sick. They'd seen him feed 5,000. They'd been with him for a while, but all of a sudden they had a new perspective because they said, who is this man? That even the winds and the waves are listening to him. But it took a storm to bring Perspective. Come on, I'm going to ride on that for a bit. Hagar, Hagar, Hagar is Abraham and and Sarah, their maidservant in Genesis. And Hagar had a relational storm with Sarah, her mistress. Uh, You know, the the story is that um, uh, uh, Abraham and and Sarah couldn't, you know, they couldn't wait on on, on the promise of God. Touch somebody, say, wait on the promise. It's going to come to pass, man. Don't go ahead of that thing. Don't go ahead of that thing. Don't go ahead of that thing. <laughs> so they couldn't wait on the promise. So Sarah is, is like, you know, uh, Abraham. Um, <laughs> Hagar is there. Uh, and, and maybe God and Abraham was like, Okay. So, 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 you know, Hagar becomes pregnant with, 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 with Abraham's baby. And then there's a personal, a personal storm that, a relational storm that, that enters between Sarah and between Hagar. And Hagar is so distressed that she runs away. She runs away. And, 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 and she runs into a place in and, 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 and Genesis 16, uh, verse, verse 11 uh, it, we praise God that, that an angel of the Lord, the Bible says, appears to her. And he says this. He says, uh, you, 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 you are now pregnant and you will give birth to a son. You are to name him Ishmael, which means God hears. For the Lord has heard your cry of distress. She was in a storm. And, 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 and the word of God came and said, God hears. And this is what's going to happen. And in, in response to that, in response to that, Hagar, Hagar said, I'm giving this name to the one who spoke to me. You are the God who sees. She had a new perspective of this God that Abraham had been talking about. She said, you are are the God who sees. The God who sees. But the perspective came out of a storm. Jesus. Abraham, speaking of Abraham, experienced a storm, many of them. But he was told by God to sacrifice his son Isaac. And he gets to the mountain that God told him of. And he lays Isaac on the altar. And we know the story. And, and he's about to sacrifice his son. And he hears the word of God say, stop. He said, don't do it. Then he's directed to a ram in the thicket that he sacrifices. And as he sacrifices this ram on that altar, this is what Abraham says. He says, I'm calling this place Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. And to this day, it says on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. But it took a storm to bring that 
perspective. You are Jehovah Jireh. Hey, you are Jehovah Jireh. Moses, 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 and, and Israel, I'm just, I'm just want to encourage you. If you're going through something, you're not, you're not just going to come out with nothing. Moses and Israel were in a battle against the Amalekites. Word of God says that, that, that when Moses has held up his hand, you know what? The, he saw that Israel was winning, but his arms got tired, and, 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 and Joshua and another person came and, and, and kept his hands up all day, and Israel won the battle. And in Exodus uh, 17, 16, Moses, it says, Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner, Jehovah Nisi. But it came out of a, the perspective came out of a storm. Hallelujah. The battle that you're in, the storm you're coming out of will give you a new perspective of the God that you serve. Hold on. Hallelujah. Hold on. It will give you a new perspective of the God that you serve. And the perspective that we gain by way of the storm, watch this. The perspective that we gain by way of the storm lasts longer than the storm that we're in. After that thing has gone, the testimony lives on. Hold on. If you're going through something, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Because God said you're not going through this for nothing. I promise you. I promise you. Job had said, Job had said at the end of his, at the end of his days of just mess, man. Job said after God answered him out of the, out of, out of the storm and started to give Job a, a lesson in, on, 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 on science and creation uh, and, you know, where were you when I, when, I, when, I, when I made the places to hold snow? And, I mean, just awesome facts that God was just revealing to Job. And Job, as, as close as he had been to God before his, 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 his storm, as close he said, listen, I repent because I had heard about you before. But now I'm seeing you. <laughs> I have a different perspective and I just, I just worship you. You can do whatever you want to do. Perspective coming out of a storm. Perspective, perspective, perspective. So this is why in uh, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, this is why Paul said, Paul said this. So, so this is why, therefore, we do not give up. Because something's coming out of this. Something's coming out of this. We do not give up. Even though our outer person is being destroyed, our inner person is being renewed day by day. Hallelujah, day by day. For a momentary light affliction is producing for us an absolutely incomparable eternal weight of glory. The affliction was here, but the glory is just going. Incomparable eternal weight of glory. That's why I said we don't, we don't give up. We don't give up. We don't give up. So we do not focus uh, we do not focus on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary. The storm is temporary. The trial is temporary. The testing, it might seem long, but it's temporary when we consider eternity. Hold on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We come out of a storm, yes, sir. We come out of a storm with wisdom with experience, with maturity. We come out of a storm with, with a new perspective of our God. And the last thing, we come out of a storm with a song. I was preparing, when I was preparing this a couple of weeks ago, I, I, I saw this text and it just leaped out at me like almost for the first time. I was just like, wow. You know how, that's why it's the living word. Because you could have seen something and read something many times, but all of a sudden what, it just takes one, one, one rhema moment. And a boom, David, David said this in Psalms 40, 1 to 3. I love it. Psalms 40 verses 1 to 3. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord. And he turned to me and he heard my cry for help. And he brought me up from a desolate pit, that's darkness, out of the muddy clay. And he set my feet on a rock, 
making my steps secure. And he put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. And he said, many will see and fear. What are they going to see? They're going to see and fear that song that you're about to sing. And they're going to put their trust in God. What I love about um, US, U.S. American college sports is that they take it seriously. <laughs> and so when you go to an American college like football game or basketball game, there's bands there. And the bands have what they call fight songs. <laughs> and so the bands, you'll have, say, Michigan is against Notre Dame. The bands, they'll have a time when Notre Dame plays their song during the game and Michigan plays their song during the game. And maybe at halftime, Notre Dame will do And then Michigan band will respond. But when the game is over, there's only one band playing. <laughs> it's the victory. It's the, it's the victory. Come on. Come on. Come on. There's only one band. And so there is a song. There is a song that, that God has put into the DNA of his children. Mm, there's a song that God has put into the DNA of his kingdom. Yes, yes, yes. And it, it doesn't mean that, 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 that we can all sing as good as Pastor Fule. It doesn't mean that we can all sing as good as Varese or It doesn't, but, but there's a song. There's a song that God has put into the DNA of his children, and it's a victory song. The first time that we encounter this song, is in Exodus. Exodus, after, after the children of Israel had come to the Red Sea and, and, and come out of bondage, and they, you, know, they, you know what we know the story, Pharaoh and everyone was following them, and, 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 and the word says that they went through the Red Sea as if on dry land. Hallelujah. And, and, and Pharaoh tried to, 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 to do the same thing, but <laughs> your enemies can't do what God has for you. But, and so, and so, and so that the, the water just came back in. And after they saw those waters crash in on the storm, <laughs> all of a sudden, a song burst out. And Exodus says, Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. They said, I will sing to the Lord. Ah. For he is highly exalted. And he has thrown the horse and its rider into the sea. And the Lord is my strength, perspective. The Lord is my song, experience. He has become my salvation, experience. This is my God and I will praise him, my father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior, perspective. Yahweh is his name. Hallelujah. These guys came out of that thing and they said, we have no choice right now but to sing. We have no choice right now but to worship. But to worship. And so we see that the, the people of God, the, the children of God all throughout the pages of the, of, of the word have a song. Have a song. There's a song. There's something in, stirring in the heart. I, and I, I always say this. It doesn't, don't worry about not singing well, honey. Just sing anyway. Worship, worship, worship is not about singing well. <laughs> That's not about singing well. Worship is about ascribing the praise and the glory to who it's due. It's a heart thing. 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 And it's so good. I'll ask Pastor Fuller and the band to come, to come forward now. We're going to close. It's so good that at the end of the word, at the end of the story, at the end of this book, Revelations 15 says this. Revelations 15 says this. John is, is caught up in vision and he's seen so much and 
and I heard so much. And then it, 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 it says, it says, it says uh, I saw a sign in, in heaven, another marvelous event of great significance. And he said, I saw before, uh, before me what seemed to be a, a sea of glass mixed with fire. <laughs> and on it stood all the people who had been victorious. Somebody say victory. By the way, he's seeing, he's seeing you. <laughs> By the way, this vision that John is seeing, all, all the people, Simone, who had been victorious, that, that means you, Simone. Uh, that, 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 that means you, Ace. Well, that, that, that means you, Pastor Mike. He said, he, I'm seeing all the people, uh-huh, those who have the victory over the beast, come on, and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name, standing, say, I'm still standing, on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. What are they doing, John? What are they doing, John? And he goes on to say, he goes on to say, and, 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 and they were singing the song of Moses. Singing the song of Moses. We just came out of that experience. We have a song to sing. But not only singing the song of Moses, they said the song of the Lamb. We are living in a dispensation where we can sing more about than what even Moses and Israel had because <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> the cross, the blood, the grace, the goodness, <laughs> the tomb is empty, the grave is empty. We, we, we have a resurrected king and what they says that they sung the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, great, somebody say great, and marvelous are your works, Lord, God Almighty, just and true are your ways, O King of saints, for you, who will not fear you and glorify your name? Who will not fear you? And glorify your name, for you alone are holy. And all nations will come and bow down before you. For your righteous deeds have been revealed. There's a song. There's a song that's been wired into your DNA as a born-again believer. And it's a victory song, man. It's a victory song. You're going to sing that song. We're going to sing that song together. It's a victory song. Hallelujah. I want us to stand together. I'm just going to bring this to a close. How can we sing Waymaker if we never saw him made a way? How can we sing he's a miracle worker if we never saw him work a miracle? So when we worship, we just don't worship from a place of faith but from a place of testimony. We've seen God do it before. And if he did it before, he can do it again. He can do it again. There is a song that God gives after each storm. I just want to encourage you to find it and to sing it and to sing it. Just gonna, I'm just going gonna, 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 gonna to say this and we're going we're gonna to erupt in, a, in a, a song of praise. What I love about the song, you've been going through this series, how, how Big Is Your God. And what I love about the song, How Great Is Our God, How Big Is Your God, is that that song asks a question, but it never answers it. Just says, how great is our God? Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Chris Tomlin, when he wrote the song, he never came up with an answer to say, well, God is this. <laughs> or that's God. Because there's no answer. We cannot fathom <laughs> or understand how great our God is, but we discover it as we walk in intimacy with him, as we walk in relation with him, and we discover it even in our storms. So this is what I know. God is so good that he takes life's challenges and trials and storms and allows us to come out with wisdom, maturity, a greater perspective of his greatness and character, and a new song in our mouth. 
And all of this is not just for our own benefit, but when that brother or sister is going through, we can have a word of encouragement for them too. David said, all are going to see it, John. All are going to see it, and they're going to be able to put their trust in the Lord. How many are just glad and grateful for the awesome goodness of your God? I just want you to lift up a, a clap and a shout of praise if you believe that word. Father, we just receive that today. No matter what someone may be going through, God, I want to say thank you that you're in there with them. I want to say thank you that you're bringing them out with spoils. You're bringing them out with perspective. You're bringing them out with maturity. Someone is learning to trust you more in the storm. <laughs> Someone is learning to know you more in the storm. And when they come out and when we come out, we want to say thank you right now for the song of victory, for the sound of victory. For the overcoming sound that you are going to give us as a testimony of your greatness, a testimony of your grace, a testimony of your mercy, a testimony of your loving kindness, a testimony of your mercy, a testimony that you are God and there is none like you. And so God, today we choose to praise you. We chose to praise you whether we're in a storm or whether we're out of a storm. We choose to lift up our voice in a victory shout, a victory shout over trial, a victory shout over the enemy, a victory shout because you are our God and you always cause us to triumph because of Jesus Christ. How many are encouraged today? Yes. Bless you. Hallelujah.